What's up, Internet? My name is Ori. Welcome back to the channel. It is Wednesday, August 7th, day number 23 inside the Big Brother house. The battles from the other day were wild. The fallout from all that is still being sorted through. So what better way to follow all that up than with a good old earthquake? Let's get into all the intel drama and more from yesterday's live feeds. But first, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button. You like this video, hit that like button, hit that notification bell. You'll never miss a video. You'll never miss a stream. If you have not seen yesterday's recap video going over all of the fights, highly recommend it. If you uh, do need a little bit of a recap, Cedric won HOH, Angela, Kenny, and Tucker were all nominated. Tucker won the veto and he wanted to do something big. So he ended up using the power of veto on himself to take down Angela, expecting Quinn to go up as the replacement. This was all despite Cedric telling him not to use the veto on her to use it on himself. Uh, but he went through with it anyway. MJ went up as the replacement nominee. She used her America's veto power and came off the block. This led to a massive house meeting. Tons of alliances and dirt was all exposed. Several fights throughout the day happened. Uh, check out yesterday's video for the full recap. It was nuts. Yesterday, though was a little bit slower on the feeds. Everyone was kind of like emotionally exhausted. They were still trying to kind of wrap their heads around everything that was said yesterday, uh, who knew what, when, and what information they were telling them, but not telling other people. And there's lots of question marks uh, in everybody's heads about former people they trusted a lot and people they didn't trust before that now maybe they might trust. So everyone's still trying to figure out where they all are standing now in the game. We did have, speaking of alliances, MJ trying to maybe get something a little bit started with uh, herself, Tucker, Chelsea, Brooklyn, maybe even Cam involved in this. Uh, no Rubina would be in it. No Leah would be in it, which is kind of weird as their MJ and Tucker's kind of number one uh, people. Takor was told about this by Chelsea. She was like, yeah, they're trying to start a thing. It's like, I don't know what's going on with it. She ended up telling Rubina and Rubina ended up telling Joseph. So this is all out there, right? They all kind of know uh, that it's happening. It's not going to be some secret big thing that's actually going to be in the works. But just that information being out there is kind of interesting because it puts doubts in a lot of people's heads. They're like, wait a minute. Now Tucker's upset that people are working with other people, but now he's doing his own thing and not telling other people. He's not even telling Rubina about it. Why? What's that about? Rubina's kind of, a little hurt by it she's like if that's real like why like i would feel hurt if he started working with mj and didn't tell me about it uh but she's kind of over having to deal with it she'd had to deal with a lot of that yesterday she's just trying to chill today so we'll see if that any of that kind of uh ends up getting more steam or, or becoming a bigger issue just uh, put a pin in it as far as other alliances and how things are going it seems like penta has kind of decided to stick together Quinn's still doing his thing in the middle where he's working with the visionaries and he's working with Penta, trying to make sure he always has numbers in the collective who also are as a whole seemingly sticking together. Uh, none of them seem to want to kind of go off and, and do their own thing. Also kind of interesting, Penta and collective were kind of the one, the two alliances that weren't like fully blown up. Uh, visionaries honest, uh, also was not blown up. Uh, but the two big ones were Penta and Collective. Neither of them were actually blown up in, in the house meeting. But apparently, at one point, several of them heard her, uh, her say this. But Angela, who originally was a member of the Collective, the Collective was made for Angela. She's not in it anymore, but it's still a thing. She apparently during the meeting was just like, huh, Collective. <laughs> and, but like nobody else, like collective members a couple of them heard it and they were like oh no but nothing else came from it so they i hope that's included in uh the recap that we get on the episode because that would be a funny moment uh but otherwise there's still there's lots of questions and we're gonna go over some of them because i have a little bit more insight on where some of them are thinking but it's still hard to know because when you're you're talking with people that are in the alliance you don't want to be saying too much so we're it's, it's a little bit difficult to know exactly where everybody stands, but I think I have a decent idea of how things are going to turn out 
uh, eventually just because of all the connective tissue uh, that's going on. Now, it was a slow day, but we also had an earthquake in uh, California, about 90 miles away from L.A., but it was felt at the CBS L.A. studio, which is on the same lot as big brother uh so the feeds went down for a little bit when they did come back everybody was outside just more for safety precaution i imagine nobody was hurt uh i don't think anything was damaged or anything like that you know just it it happens out in la sometimes right uh so while that was happening they were all kind of just kind of bonding playing some games they played mafia which at this point has become kind of a, a yearly tradition that everybody uh in the big brother house uh ends up doing when they're bored Uh, There was kind of an interesting little thing that Chelsea brought up. Chelsea decided to stir the pot a little bit. Uh, She was like, yeah, why don't we all go around and we give two names that we think could end up being put up as the nominee. (laughs) So they all went uh, around and did that. It seemed it seemed like for the most part, everybody was taking it kind of lightheartedly. Uh, But Quinn, Cam and Rubina were kind of the top names being mentioned by everybody. A lot of them were mentioning themselves as well, right? Just to kind of get out of it. But kind of interesting that those are three that are up there. Other than Leah, those are kind of the top four that I've been hearing from a lot of the people outside of the house as well as potential nominees. Uh, We'll get into all that a little bit later because we do have a poll up on the channel that uh, hopefully will give us some insight uh, as we head on into Thursday's eviction. Uh, Other than that, though, again, very chill day. Towards the end of the night, though, we did have a few cool conversations that we were able to get some more info from. Uh, First off, there was uh, Chelsea and Cedric who were having a chat with uh, Quinn. Just again, kind of going over the idea like, hey, we'll stick together. It's hard to know, though, where Chelsea's head's really at. A lot of the conversations I've seen with her have always been either with people in the collective, but with other people around. I didn't get to see a good conversation with just her and Cedric, where it's just them two talking. But when I did see Cedric alone, which we'll talk about a little later, it seems like for the most part, they're still thinking, hey, stay Penta strong, stay collective strong. Brooklyn seems like she's feeling the same way. Doesn't seem like a lot of that is being leaked from from them. It seems like the only one who's still actually playing a little bit and it could end up biting them is Quinn. He's the only one who's still dropping hints about the different stuff. Uh, The visionaries, though, Quinn, Kimo, Decor, they were all talking outside about, you know, what they've heard, what's been going on. Uh, It seems like, again, everyone's still leaning Kenny over Tucker. And then if it happens to be that Tucker is up there with the renom, Tucker would go uh, over them. But again, nobody's being super clear with that. Because one, They don't know who the nominee is going to be. But two, if Tucker ends up hearing about this and he's the one to win AI Arena and it's not even an option, that could also come and bite them in the butt. Kind of similar again to why, you know, people aren't being super honest when Matt was up on the block or when Lisa was up on the block because they didn't want them to have the chance to win that AI, come back and then know, oh, yeah, you weren't going to vote for me and now you're against me. So everyone's kind of keeping a little bit of a tight lipped on it, but I do think for the most part, there's only one scenario, and we'll go over that a little bit later, where I think things could get interesting, depending on who the renom is. Uh, Kimo and t they do worry about, like, the inner alliance that's in the collective, and Quinn's like, ah, don't worry about the Pentagon, because I'm, I'm with you guys, and he goes, oops, wait, did I say that? Because they were like, Pentagon? From what I understand now, like I I know Quinn had filled them in about kind of the group. I know he kind of talked to Joseph a little bit about it, and he had a little slip up where he said Penta, then fixed it and said Collective. And I don't know if these were purposeful by Quinn to drop the name or if this was accidental or what it was. But I think for the most part, he wanted that kind of deniability so that none of them could be able to go to, let's say, Chelsea, Cedric or Cam or even Brooklyn and be like, yeah, I know about the Pentagon. Uh, But now it seems like that name has gotten out there. So Quinn is kind of digging himself a little bit of a deeper hole when he's already in a deep one. He's already in there and he's like, wait, maybe we can go even deeper. You know what? I feel like I could fit three other people in here. We need to be able to fit five. Uh, So he's he's just trying to go a little deeper on there. Uh, Other than that, though, again, chemo and decor, they're worried about it. They they think that's an issue. But again, Quinn saying like, yeah, but the problem is. 
you guys are thinking you're on the bottom because you're just thinking of the collective as a whole. You're forgetting that I'm with you guys. Like I'm switching over and then I'm pretty sure we can pull Brooklyn over and that completely changes the numbers, which he has a point. And I don't know 100% how much they actually trust this because we did hear them talking about it later. Uh, we'll go over. Quinn also says it's a good idea if they bring Joseph in and let him know about kind of the secondary group and make sure they're a good four and then they can get Brooklyn over. Potentially, Leah is that last one to be voted out before they have to start going after collective people. So it might be good to kind of grab her before that does. So then they maybe have her as a number as well. Again, a lot of this was led by Quinn, though, so who knows? Then later, we ended up getting to Core and Chemo alone, and they were kind of talking. They're like, listen, Chemo especially, it's like a lot of it sounds good, but I still have, I still have worries. And they talk about how much they've heard about Quinn and all of his final twos. So they kind of want to be like, you know, a little bit conf confrontational with him where they're like, hey, what's really going on? But they're also worried because he does have the power and they don't want to like, you know, completely freak him out to the point where then when he uses the power, he thinks they're an option. Right. Uh, so they're 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 worried about it, but they're also, you know, sticking close to Quinn. This is also where it's like, I, I don't understand. I don't understand uh, what they're thinking. It, this, a lot of it felt like it was coming more from decor than it was chemo. Chemo does a lot of like listening. And I still think there's, there's distrust there between the two of them, uh, especially because I think this goes even before the blowups. I think chemo has a worry that decor is too close to Cedric, to Chelsea, uh, maybe even Cam, but especially to Cedric and Chelsea. Uh, because she puts out, she's like, yeah, I really trust Cedric, though, right? Like, you know a bit, you know that there's this secondary alliance in your collective, right? You know that there's thing, this thing now, you even know it's called the Pentagon. But yet, for some reason, you still trust Cedric. And I don't know if I put that on Cedric being really good. I've talked about how much I think Cedric and Chelsea are really good players in this game. I don't think they should have won HOH the past two weeks. I think a lot of this all could have been settled if they just stood back and were like, you guys all, you guys all fight, right? They got a little bit of heat on them from different things they had to do during their HOHs, but for the most part, they're coming out of it okay, uh, despite uh, putting themselves in that position. But I don't know if I put Takur's trust in them as them being good or Takur just being blinded and not realizing what's really going on uh, in there. So that's kind of a, an interesting thing. Kaur also wants to make moves, right? She doesn't like the idea that Quinn wants to go after them. Again, like, I don't understand this. She thinks, like, that would be good resume moves for Quinn. All right, well, you know what? Instead of Quinn going after him, maybe when you win HOH, you take that shot to court, right? Like, if that's what you want, right, you can still do that. And when the time comes, you be the one to own it. You be the one to win the veto that backdoors them. You be the one to nominate them. Like, it, there, there's an easy solution to this, right? <laughs> but she doesn't want that Quinn would be building a resume. But she does talk about, like, listen, like, I want to make big moves, but then you're afraid of, like, other... I, I don't know. I Just, to me, it feels a little weird that they would trust in Cedric when Cedric hasn't told them anything about this alliance and Quinn's the one telling them. I understand that Quinn's going around and he's telling other people lots of different things, but if he's only telling you the actual information, you should then start to believe, actually, yeah, you know what? Maybe, maybe he is more trustworthy than he actually is. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, we then did see uh, uh, Cedric kind of join them and have some chats and just about kind of stick with the collective. Him and Decor stayed up kind of later, and they were the last two to end up going to bed uh, after Quinn and, and Chemo left. Uh, Quinn also apparently, this is kind of funny, Quinn apparently sleepwalks uh and for the last two nights i i guess at some point i i haven't seen a clip of it i haven't, I haven't seen anything but apparently he's ended up like kind of hovering over rubina's bed hey, <laughs> and even to the point that i guess this morning he like grabbed her arm i'm not a I'm, i don't know exactly how this is all played out uh but he's moved into the have not room uh to sleep he says like he hasn't been getting a good sleep and then when then that happens he sleep talks and he sleepwalks, so he's kind of locking himself uh, in there. It's also interesting because we did have earlier today, especially 
after all of the blowups, Leah and Rubina having a conversation where they were kind of talking about how, like, they didn't actually like that Quinn was in their room anymore, especially after everything that happened. Uh, so I don't know if this connects with it or if this is all just another little situation, just something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, again, though, it, it was kind of a slow day, not too much going on, but I want to kind of talk about where things kind of are sitting right now. Uh, for the most part, again, everyone seems like they're on board that, hey, whoever the pawn is, whoever America's vote is, they're a pawn. They're not going to go home. It will be Kenny and then Tucker in that order, right? If Kenny and Tucker are on the block, Kenny goes home. If uh, Kenny's up there with the, the renom, Kenny goes home. If Tucker's up there with the renom, it feels like most people are saying right now, but not to Tucker, that they would want to go with Tucker, but also they're being a little tight-lipped because they don't want that spreading around too much. Who's going up, though? We still don't know, right? In the house, they're thinking quit, and they're also thinking maybe Cam. They're thinking Rubina. A lot of you guys were all thinking that as well. Uh, we can pull this up, I believe. Oh, no. Nope. Uh, oh, no. Nope. That didn't work. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's see if I can get this up here. Uh, this one? There we go. <laughs> there we go. You got uh, our new poll for the day. Uh, oh, looks like somebody actually already voted in the poll. Leah's at 100% there. Do we get any more? We got a couple more votes. We got a couple more votes pulling on through. Uh, Quinn? Up there with 38, Cam with 31. That's an interesting uh, one to see up there. Leah with 25, Rubina only with six. So if you want to get your vote in, this will be able to kind of let us have a little insight of who some of the top contenders might be. It's always really hard because you have a lot of the, the casual TV only watchers who they don't even probably know Rubina, right? So maybe they wouldn't even see her as a possibility. Maybe they're all going Quinn. Honestly, I think... Quinn is the only one that sets up what could be what could be a potentially interesting scenario. Uh, I did a little what if. Here we go. This is what if Quinn ends up being the replacement nom, but also what if Kenny wins the AI? So in that situation, we would have Quinn on the block versus Tucker. And I think this is the only scenario. And it needs to be this, right? If Kenny's on the block, if Tucker wins AI, throw this all out the water, Kenny's going home. But if Kenny wins AI and it's Tucker versus Quinn, we could have an interesting scenario. So first off, Cedric, he's over on the Quinn side, but he doesn't have a vote, right? He's HOH, so he's only there uh, in case there is a tie, and I believe we can't have a tie this week. So... Who do you have on the Quinn side? I think Chelsea's locked in. She's voting for Quinn. She's not keeping Tucker. Brooklyn, I think, also locked in, voting to keep Quinn, not keeping Tucker. I think all four of them are right now still staying very true to the Pentagon, still staying very true to the collective. Quinn, the only one who's kind of under undermining the Pentagon with his own thing going on. You do have Chelsea... Uh, and Cedric, who kind of have their own thing going on with Cam. But even that, there's some stress there. And we'll go over that in just a second as well. Takor and Chemo. I think there was a chance that Takor wasn't trusting in Quinn. But one of the things she was very specific about in the convo with Chemo uh, 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 last night was she would rather work with Quinn, who seems like she he wants to actually work with her, than to work with Tucker who she kind of feels more is intimidating her to work with them. Uh, so she seems like she's more on the Quinn side, but I did kind of, you know, have that little bit of a lean, right? Because she's also, again, saying she's not exactly happy with the whole collective thing because she feels like it's not her move. Again, Tor, if you want to eventually have that be your move, be the one to blow it up later, right? Be the one to take the first shot. That's how people make their move. Not, you know, just going, oh, this is easy. I'm going to do it. Be the one to make the move. Be the one. Don't complain about it. Say it. I also got to say, I, I'm a little bit out on Takor. Uh, one of the things she said last night when she was alone on the hammock was she's like, I don't want to be led by no man. Hey, I respect it. It's cool or whatever. But what I didn't like was when she said, uh, I just have to figure out, you know, I want to win. But at the end of the day, I just want to make sure that I, myself or another woman wins. It's like, 
No, 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 yourself, period, right? I, I don't care who else wins. I don't. I don't care who else wins. Worry about yourself. It's the only way you can make sure. We've seen tons of people sacrifice their games for other people because of cause or whatever. No, win it yourself. Win it yourself, the core. Uh, but yeah, I could see maybe her leaning a little bit. Eh. Kimo also does have that little bit of a crush on Tucker, but I think Kimo trust Quinn a little bit right as much as things are kind of weird there I think he actually does somewhat trust Quinn and, and sees that as an option for him Joseph also he's the, the most loyal to the collective that there possibly could be is Joseph <laughs> uh, so he would also vote for Quinn so that's five that's five you have locked in Cam Cam I have kind of in the middle right I feel like Cam could sway right especially if maybe leah kind of tries to pull him in but i think at the end of the day i think cam would side with cedric and chelsea i don't think he would go against cedric especially and cedric really wants tucker gone because tucker has said he's going after him so if cam would would decide to vote to keep tucker that's taking a direct shot at cedric like direct i don't know how he would get around that that's literally drawing a line in the sand saying yeah, Cedric, I like you and all. We're in an alliance, and I know this guy's saying he's coming after you, but I just voted to keep him. So I just don't see Cam actually voting with that side, but put him in the middle because he's probably the most likely at this point. Then you have on the other side, I think some votes that would be locked in for Tucker to stay. I think Kenny, if he wins AI and he's voting, he's going to vote for Tucker to stay. MJ, Angela, Leah, Rubina, all I think would vote for Tucker to stay. Rubina, I could see being swayed over as well. I feel like if she knows that the numbers aren't there, she might end up going, but she is so close with Tucker, I'm putting her in there now. So what that kind of leads you to is five secured for Quinn, five secured for Tucker, Cam in the middle, but I think Cam would end up going with Quinn, sticking with the collective, sticking with the Pentagon, and not rocking the boat too much. But it's the most interesting scenario we have because I also could see, I could see it. I just don't think it's going to. I think it would end up being kind of the, the more sensible approach and they would vote to keep Quinn, especially with the idea that Quinn is going to use the HOH no matter what next week. Uh, he would end up keeping all of the collective and the Pentagon safe. Even if one of them wins HOH, he can then use it. Uh, and get all the blood on his hand. So it kind of just makes sense that, like, hey, even if you don't necessarily tr trust Quinn, uh, Quinn too much, he's probably going to use his power to keep the people who keep him around safe. So it, it feels like to me that would be the scenario we would end up going with. As far as what the house actually looks like, I think we're still looking at a situation like this. Rubina, I think, will end up on the visionary side. I feel like everybody towards the bottom of uh, the map who have like no social credit at all in the game, I think all of them are lining up to be taken out. You then get to, I think, what they're probably most interesting is maybe Angela's able to, to sneak her way on in if they start taking shots at each other before they actually get to the final of the collective. That could be interesting as well. But I think overall, this is actually a better picture of where the house is, where the house is going, and how things are going to develop moving forward. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how this all plays out. We do have the episode tonight. We'll get more information on how we actually vote for America's veto. I assume it's all just going to be on the BB website. Once we have that, I'll tweet it out. I'll pull it in the Discord. Uh, we'll talk about it on uh, Thursday morning's uh, update, and we'll we'll make sure you guys are all getting your, your votes in there. Uh, but you're going to want to do that because we're only going to have a short amount of time to get those votes in on who we want to be America's nominee. Honestly, if you want my pick on who I think would be the most interesting people to go up, other than the Quinn scenario we talked about, I think that's the most interesting vote. But I think there's a there's two other options that would be probably more interesting for what could happen in the house. The first one would be Cam. And I think that would be interesting more because it, what Chelsea's reaction would be. And actually both of these are, are revolving around Chelsea. I feel like she's the one who would take the most from a nomination 
and try and twist it in in her head to try and make it make sense so if cam went up she would think all right yeah cam and leah they are too close this is the whole thing she might even start distrusting cam that he's leaking even more information and that she's on the right track of of, of this whole issue and would go after leah even harder the other option would be if chelsea herself were to be the one to be renominated i don't think this has a chance of happening but man it would be kind of sweet to see because chelsea kind of has almost this secondary personality she doesn't bring it out much she brought it out when she was stirring the pot with asking people who the renoms were but she leaves it a lot of times when she's in just conversations with cedric it will come out when she's talking to the cameras by herself it'll come out it's almost this like I don't know, this more energetic kind of uh, unhinged Chelsea. And I kind of love it when she brings it out. And I feel like if she was put on the block, it would cause her head to spin. We might see that Chelsea come out more where she kind of embraces this like villain role, but she's not even a villain, right? Like she's being voted up more just for the fun of it. Like we're having fun with it. So that's why she would end up getting voted up. Not because we don't like her. And I also think it would be a little poetic. I did say the only time it's safe for this uh, power with MJ to be flushed is if you are the HOH. And I did say it probably would be smart for Chelsea to take that shot that week instead of letting it happen the next week when you're an option. Because if she would have taken that shot last week, the entire house would not have blown up the way it did during Cedric's HOH. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it would have been interesting and it would be interesting if maybe I could have predicted that to happen. I'm, I don't think it's going to happen, but I'm saying it would be an interesting case scenario. Otherwise, I don't think anybody else going up would be that interesting. If chemo went up, people would be like shocked, but it wouldn't really matter that much. Same with the core or Brooklyn, even uh, Rubina, Joseph, it would be like eh. another kind of interesting thing if Chelsea went up. Angela and Kenny might get this twisted idea that America's on their side because she's the one who nominated them. At the very least, they might think, wait, did America like Lisa? So I feel like there's lots of interesting things that would go through the house guest's head. Uh, but I do think probably the most, I don't know, I, the most likely is probably Quinn, I think at this point, uh, who would be the replacement nominee. But I, I don't think that's actually the most entertaining one. It would lead to an entertaining eviction right where maybe there could be a split but i think they would all go with quinn anyway and keep him around but i think what would happen with quinn is if he finds out actually oh i'm being voted up as america's least favorite person pretty much i feel like he would go into like a little bit of a shell and be like oh what i'm doing isn't right but what he's doing is causing all this chaos and fun and i feel like we that's not the message we want to send because i that's the other thing with these votes is you can kind of send a message to the house guest I'll say this, if you're a house guest in the Big Brother house, anytime there is a vote and you go, oh, maybe I could take something from this, like, oh, that person must be really liked or, oh, this is that. And you try and put that to your game. Stop. Just don't don't let it affect it. Do not let any of that info affect how you're playing the game, because at the end of the day, all it's going to do is make you second guess things, stick to your 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 real true gut feelings when you're inside the house. Ooh, it could be interesting. Uh, thank you guys all again so much for watching. Uh, make sure you, you vote in the poll. It's on the channel. Again, I'll post it in uh, the pinned comments in the description down there. You can find all other links down there, too, like uh, all of my socials, Twitter, Twitch, Kick. I haven't been streaming on there, I know, but I, I plan on it. It's just busy touring big brother season uh the discord a discord's a great place to kind of chat with other big brother fans but uh fans of other things too as well we got a sports channel in there other reality shows channel in there so you can kind of keep up with everything going on thank you guys all again so much for watching if you are new here though hit that subscribe button you like this video hit that like button hit that notification bell especially if you made it all the way to the end of this video smash that like button also i did hear from a couple people apparently they were getting unsubbed I know YouTube has like some weird glitches like that where you don't get the notifications or uh, it might unsub you. So just double check that you got notifications on if you turned it on before or double check that you're subbed if you aren't subbed. 
Uh, and that's why it's also good to always check out the Twitch, uh, or not the Twitch, uh, the Twitter and the Discord especially, because I always post new videos up uh, on there as well, so you can get the notifications. Uh, but we are on our way to 15K, which is just crazy uh, that the channel has gotten so big. So thank you guys all so much. We'll have the episode tonight. We'll see how that all goes. I think it's going to be an exciting one where we get to see some of the fallout from how Vito all played out, but I imagine a lot of that will be on Thursday's episode, but how do you fit it all on Thursday's episode? And so much of what happened needs to be there for uh, the vote, for people to have a, a full understanding of what they're voting for. I don't know. Tonight's episode could be kind of crazy. It could keep, keep give us like a little bit of, you know, uh, unsatisfaction because maybe they couldn't fit everything in there for tonight's episode. And we'll see that on Thursday. Either way, it's been a wild week once again. This season just keeps giving. Thank you guys all so much, and I will see you next time.